You don't want to go into the new year broke. We're going into this new year feeling ready. Am I really that much and breaking these fingers down like a camera? You don't really need to you up. Hey beauties! The end of the year is right around the corner and it's the perfect time to hit the reset button on life. If you are feeling a little overwhelmed or stuck, don't worry, I got you. In this video, I will share some practical tips to reset your life, mind, body, and goals. So you can head into the new year feeling refreshed and ready. If you are excited to end the year on a high note, don't forget to hit the like button on this video and subscribe to this channel for more self growth and wellness tips. Okay, so step number one, reflect on the past year. If you know me or if you follow me on any other social media platforms, you know that I'm so big on reflection. One of the things I've implemented this entire year is to do self reflection every single morning. This has literally helped me to think through things in my life, think through things that have worked, that have not worked, how I can be better, how I can improve. So please, in this moment, take a moment to reflect on this past year. What did you like about this year? What did you hate? What did you wish happened differently? What could you do more of, less of, all of those things? You cannot move forward without understanding where you've been. Heavy. As you think through some of the reflection points from this year, try to journal, write these things down because it'll really resonate as you're writing it. You can also then look back, you know, a few months from now, mid next year and kind of just see how far you've come. But just write down some journal prompts could be, like I was saying before, what did I like about this year? What was the most exciting point of this year? What was the lowest point that you felt was this year? All of these things will help you start to brainstorm and understand where you've been this year. Seeing your thoughts on paper can help bring clarity. Okay, step number two, declutter and simplify, okay? If we're trying to grow and become the best version of ourselves, we really have to have a clear head, a clear mind, and this is the perfect time as we wind down this year, as you know, we get some vacation time, holiday time to be off work, simplify and declutter your space, your car, you know, your closets, any little thing, and, and don't overwhelm yourself with this. You can start small, but I love a clean house. I love an organized house. I love, I am not a hoarder. So if you are a hoarder, this may be a good time to say, okay, what are some things I haven't touched in a while? What are some spaces that I haven't gone to in a while in my house or my place and why? And try to keep things clean, organized and decluttered. This will really give you some clarity and kind of level set as you go into a new year. Donate any items that you don't use, sell anything. I know myself personally, I've been trying to clean my garage out for months, but this is one of the, this is gonna be one of my goals for the rest of this year is to really, any old clothes, any of my daughter's old toys, things that I haven't worn or used all year, it's getting donated or it's, it's going away. Don't just think about the physical, think about digitally. We are in a digital world, our phones, our computers, Declutter and organize your digital files. You know, a lot of us get our iPhone space storage full so fast. Go through your photos, put all of the old stuff on the external hard drive, clean and declutter and organize your digital spaces too. So with this tip, okay, it may sound like a lot, it may seem overwhelming. So what I want you to do is consider doing like a session of decluttering and cleansing. Maybe invite some friends over to help you have a glass of wine or just put on some music and make it more enjoyable as you do this process. So it doesn't feel as overwhelming, but it's so beneficial in the process to becoming the best version of yourself. Okay, step number three, revisit your goals and set new intentions, okay? This is so important because I'm so big on understanding what you want for yourself, how to get there, but also evolving what you want for yourself. So assess your goals, right? So if you had some goals this year that maybe you didn't accomplish, or you did and you know consider are these goals still relevant do these do they still fit what I want for myself in my life get rid of the old out with the old and with the new is how it goes so if those goals don't quite align anymore or if you've reached those goals and you need to elevate into new goals really consider that at this time this is also a time to set one to three new intentions for the new year you don't have to, you shouldn't wait until December 31st. You shouldn't wait, wait until January to do your vision board or set your intentions. You want to do it now. Now is the time so that you can say, okay, this is what I want to do. 
and you start planting seeds November, December before the new year even comes in. So when January comes in, you're already like rolling. You already already have some motion going for what you want for yourself in 2025. So we all, I know so many people who set intentions, who have vision boards and you know, six months later I check in with them and I'm like, so you know, and they're still in the same place. They're still in the idea phase. So when you're setting your intentions, think of the SMART method, which is being specific, have measurable goals, achievable goals, relevant goals, and time-bound goals, okay? So that way you're being very intentional, very detailed with what you want, how you're gonna measure it, and more specifically, the timeline on when you accomplish these goals. And I want y'all to remember, this doesn't have to be stressful. Don't aim for perfection. Focus on progress. Step four, okay? I'm big on this if you've seen me before. Prioritize self-care and wellness. You cannot do it if you're not taking care of yourself, okay? I, I'm doing this type of content, I'm making these type of videos because I am really that girl who I say I'm gonna do something and I get it done and then I keep achieving goals beyond that. Once I knock off one goal, I get another one you know, written down and I accomplish it. And I do it through some of the strategies I'm sharing in this video and some of my previous videos, but that includes prioritizing self-care and wellness because I know, comment in the comment section if you can relate to this, However, whenever I'm disoriented, maybe I didn't eat all day because I'm so busy trying to take care of X, Y, Z, or, you know, I haven't really stretched out my body. I haven't done a bubble bath. I haven't done anything self-care to make my body and my mind and my soul feel good. And you can't perform optimally like that. You cannot perform as the highest version of yourself like that. You cannot show up for others like that. So please, please, please. Prioritize your self-care and wellness. When you take care of yourself, you show up better in every area of your life. In this moment, with this step, I want you to review your sleep, nutrition, and fitness routines. Evaluate those routines. Where can you make improvement? Try something new. Journaling, meditation, or even a new hobby. Definitely schedule some downtime. It's so important, especially for somebody like, who, like me, who's type A and it's like everything has to be you know, I have to know what's going on. I have to kind of map out things to function properly. Schedule some downtime. Make sure you plan for downtime to do nothing. I feel guilty sometimes when I do this because I'm like, oh, I don't feel productive. But no, sis, you need to take care of yourself. You need some downtime. It's all about balance. Also consider scheduling many getaways. You know, it doesn't have to be expensive. Everyone doesn't have the budget to really travel like that, but schedule some mini getaways, whether it's a staycation, whether it's just like a, um, a small road trip, anything that can just get your mind off of the day to day and kind of help you to reset. Pro tip, put self care on the calendar like you do everything else. You know, you got a doctor's appointment, you kind of put that on your calendar and you go. Do the same thing when it comes to self-care. That's one of the ways you can start really taking serious, prioritizing yourself. Okay, step number five, y'all, okay? This is important because the economy is bad. A lot of us don't have the best spending habits, spending tips. So for step number five, I want you to create a financial reset plan. Financial clarity reduces stress. I know this is a word. I don't know if we really consciously think about it until the moment where it's like, I'm stressed out financially. I don't have money to pay for this. But when you are organized financially, you have much less stress, much less things to worry about. And this really sets you up for success. I want y'all to review your spending habits, okay? Cut out anything that's unnecessary. Y'all know if you if you don't know, I'm a, I'm a DIY girly, so I do a lot of things on my own. It's important sometimes, one, to support other people's businesses, especially small businesses, and not have to do things yourself all the time, but it's good to know how. Especially when it comes to trying to really set a good financial plan, cut back on some expenses. There's all kinds of nail solutions out here so that you're not spending money on nails every day. You can learn how to do, you know, your own eyebrows, or, you know, there's waxing kits out here. Just different things to Maybe do maybe pay for some of those expenses less. I'm not saying to stop supporting that business owner that you're supporting, but when you think about your financial goals, if you need to save some extra money, you need to really feel like figure out how you're gonna cut down, okay? Really figure out what's unnecessary, okay? That's gonna be key. I want you to also set a savings goal for the next few months. So once you think about, you know, be realistic in what you are gonna get income-wise every month. 
and definitely be strict on yourself when it comes to expenses. But I want you to set savings goals. Everyone should be able to save something. If not, think through, you know, what's your situation right now? Do you need a, a better job, a higher paying job? Do you need a second job? Um, think about those things because you want to be in a space where you can save and ultimately set savings goals so you can reach some you know, financial goals that you may have longer term. Okay, y'all. Also, because of the time of the year we're in, create a holiday budget so that you don't go over and that you don't overspend. That's one of the things I'm currently doing now. This is my month for holiday shopping and I'm thinking about, okay, what, is, what can I spend? What can I afford to spend, okay? A lot of times holiday gifts don't get used like that or, you know, if they're not as appreciated, but just really be conscious on what you're spending on for holiday gifts and making sure that you go, don't go over the budget that you set for yourself. You don't wanna go into the new year broke. So you guys, as you're planning your financial situation out for financial clarity and just, you know, getting yourself mentally in a better space financially, small changes can help. Think about meal prepping, meal planning so that you don't order out fast food. Think about some of the services. I know at one point, a couple years ago, I had literally every subscription. And there are, there are some services out here that will help you consolidate your subscriptions, but think about you know the Netflix, the, the Hulus, all of the streaming services, the Instacarts, the Amazons, the DoorDash, the Ubers, all of these things really just evaluate it. And if you're not looking at your bank statements every month, you need to, okay? So just evaluate and just start small, start chucking away as small things that you can cut back on or alter to help save. I'm gonna give y'all a bonus tip, a bonus step. Cultivate gratitude and practice letting go. This has changed my life this year, honestly, because I've said this before if you've seen me, last year was horrible for me. It was a big, big transition year for me in my life. And this year I was like, you know what? You know, everybody was like soft girl era and I was like, I'm gonna live it. I'm going to live it. I'm not just posting about it. And I have. And every single morning when I do my self-reflection, I talk to myself out loud in the car. And every month I'll record these audios. Maybe I'll use it for something eventually. But I record myself reflecting. Like I started off in the beginning of this video. Self-reflection is so important. Reflecting on your past is so important. So I will record audio of me talking every month. I do this every day, but I only record once a month. Reflecting on this week, this year, this month, every day this year, I've done this. And then I also, as a part two, I practice gratitude. I'm like, you know, I'm so grateful for X, Y, and Z. And it humbles you. At the, I like to do it at the start of the day because it really humbles you. It really grounds you and it really helps you to tackle some of the things. So if I'm at work and, a, and the day is stressful, that gratitude, almost likely every day I'm like I'm grateful I have a job it may not be the easiest but I'm grateful some people don't have that I'm grateful for my salary it could be you know it doesn't have to be the situation but it is so practice gratitude is so important because there's always somebody doing worse than you y'all as we wind down this year and prepare for the next year I want you to think about and really consider letting go of grudges letting go of regrets letting go of unrealistic expectations Give yourself grace, please. Give yourself grace because life is hard enough. You don't need to put that extra burden, that extra stress on yourself when you don't have to. I want you to go into the new year feeling relieved, feeling empowered, feeling motivated and inspired to just live your best life. We only get one and I want it to be a beautiful one, okay? I want you to use this reset as a way to release emotional baggage and give yourself permission to move on. I don't care what it was, a job, a relationship, a situation, whatever it is, you're going into this new year feeling ready, okay? So just to wrap things up, the new year is a fresh start, but you do not have to wait until January 1st to reset your life. Start now and head into the new chapter feeling grounded and excited. I want y'all to tell me what step are you going to focus on first? Okay, these are very helpful. I've used them in my own life, so that's why I'm sharing it. But I want y'all to think about which step are you going to use the most. Leave a comment in the comment section of this video and let me know so we can get this conversation going together. And ultimately, we can move into the new year feeling like we're prepared and we have a tribe behind us supporting us. If you found this video helpful at all, please hit the like button on this video. 
drop a comment like I said before and consider subscribing to my channel for more self-improvement content, any content that's really going to help you elevate your life and ultimately live a more beautiful one. Okay guys, if you have not already, check me out on Instagram and TikTok. The information will be in the bottom of this video, the entire video. Instagram is at iNicole. TikTok is it's underscore I Nicole. I look forward to connecting with y'all on there. It's a more direct, a more intimate way of us connecting. You can DM me, you can comment. I engage very heavily with my people. Um, YouTube as well, but Instagram and TikTok, I, I literally do daily motivation. So I post a video inspiring women like me every single day. So I look forward to connecting with you guys on there and I will see you in my next video.